is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or noteworthy, think upon those things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me, or seen in me, put it in practice. The God of peace will be with you always. Now let us stand and sing our call to worship hymn 136. And now we will have the daily word read by Ian Foley. Good morning. Good morning. Realize 
I realized the power of spiritual truth. I've had many aha moments throughout my life when something that had befuddled me for years suddenly became clear. It may have been something I tried to learn in school, a skill I practiced and tried to master as I grew, or even an idea that challenged my understanding of the world around me. Whenever I realized something new, I could feel my world expanding, opening up before me a fresh, in fresh and exciting ways, making me eager to discover even more. On my spiritual journey, I feel a similar excitement as I realize I have so much more than a spark of divinity within me. I am fully divine, just as I am fully human. I feel newly alive in this realization and so very grateful for it. And from Genesis chapter 28, verse 16, then Jacob woke from his sleep and he said, surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know, and I did not know it. Thank you. That's beautiful. Um, my thoughts for today are around our, um, our daily work, which is um, realize. And let us ponder it for a second. Um, realize is to grasp, to understand clearly, to make real, give reality to, to bring vividly to mind, to bring into concrete existence, to understand a situation, sometimes suddenly, and sometimes I might add, it takes a while. Many years ago, I purchased the book, The Road Less Traveled by M. Scott Peck, and I'm sure some of you did too. The book is about the psychology of love, traditional values, and spiritual growth. The book begins with the statement, life is difficult. And I immediately closed it, thinking, I don't need a book to tell me that. I know that already. Some years later, I read The Road Less Travel, and it turned out to be one of the best books about values and spiritual growth I've ever read. I was then able to understand it better. After the life is difficult st um, statement, it went on to say that this is a great truth, one of the greatest truths. It is a great truth because once you see this truth, you transcend it. Once you know that life is difficult, once we truly understand and accept it, then life is no longer difficult because once it is accepted, the fact that life is difficult doesn't matter. We grow, we realize who we are and we realize who, whose we are, meaning we belong to God and God belongs to us. We are then not always challenged by what we said or how life looks on the outside, but who we are on the inside. Every experience is an opportunity to bring forth the divine, to see the good and the blessings. Even in the darkness, even in difficulty, we can shine the light of God's love and see the truth. No matter how things appear, God is with us, within us, us, all of the people in this room, all people, and all situations. When I acknowledge God's presence in and as my life, I know I am favored and I am loved. And um, Reverend Charles included that in the prayer this morning when we were in the room, that is, it was so wonderful. Um, I know I am favored, again, I'll say that, and I am loved. This is the journey we all strive for. This brings to mind something I heard Maya Angelou say, as she was speaking, she responded to someone who said, I am a Christian. Maya said, already? Because she felt that it was a lifelong process because she felt it was something we work on daily. I guess this is a matter, this is a matter of perspective, whether one says I am a Christian or I'm working to be one, an awareness, a realization has taken place. Unity and encompasses the belief that through our actions, our works, and our prayers, we strive to have a stronger connection to God and to help others realize the same. When we realize we are the source and the cause of our truth, we rise above the conventional world, even as we function in it. 
metaphysically speaking, we know we have the power to determine health and, de and abundance in our lives. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. We realize we are already free. The realization keeps us grounded. I realized that the wonderful things that God wanted for me in my life required my cooperation and personal effort on my part. As human beings, we reflect the divine essence that creates an abundance, peaceful and loving world, an abundant, peaceful and loving world. For me, this awareness created an important shift in my thinking and I began to affirm a divine intention to embrace seeing the good in myself and others, to realize this was a giant step. Today, I take responsibility for my life, being thankful for the basic gifts I have been given. Today, I remember to respect myself, thereby reflecting God's grace that undeniably moves throughout this universe. And I know each of you feel the same. Now, let us all affirm and our firm statement is, I realize the power of spiritual growth, spiritual truth. Let's say it together. I realize the power of spiritual truth. Um, and you may re remain seated, but we will sing our affirming hymn number 40. Oh, fill me with thine presence, Lord. At this time, I invite you to take a deep breath and relax into the stillness of peace. Let the peace of God flow into each breath. Father, Mother God, we gather here to say thank you. Thank you for keeping us and the light that shines in each of us. Thank you for the realization of you in our lives in all of us. Only when we know ourselves can we live a life to help others. We know that challenges will come and we also know that you are always with us. We know without knowing that you go forth and make the crooked places straight. We pray that we always realize that you may not always 
that we may not always do great things, but we can do small things with great love. This is the love you put in each of us, and we say thank you. We ask for your continued grace and mercy. Amen, and so it is. Let us now stay in and sing hymn number 47, perfect, from, a, from with energy and love. <laughs> time that we would have you may be seated this is the time we would have um, walked around and greeted everyone but we are now doing air hugs so from where you are please give love and blessings of love to everyone very nice I can feel it too And now we will hear our message from Reverend Charles. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good morning. <laughs> I have one thing to do. Mute the phone. <laughs> I got a new phone this week. And I don't know how to mute it. <laughs> and I don't want it to ring while I'm on here. That would be a no no. Maybe I should just turn it off. But great morning. Good to see everyone. One more thing. <laughs> if you've ever been up here, you know you get thirsty. <laughs> so you need your water. Well, it's great to see everyone. 
it feels like summer because I think a lot of people are at the beach. <laughs> and we say hi to all our Zoom persons. We said, welcome, thank you for Zooming in. I don't have the camera on today, so we can't do a <laughs> reverse picture, but that's okay. So I'm thankful for all of you for coming out. It is a muggy, sticky day. I can feel it in my wool suit, <laughs> but it's a beautiful day. And I'm grateful that you all came out. I think most of all, I thank Bernadette for all her beautiful words and for reminding us one of the keys is acceptance. When we accept things the way they are, we're not in resistance. So we don't need to go out and fix anybody. We just need to go out and accept everyone just where they are so that we can demonstrate that we are Christians. They say the last Christian who, who walked this earth died 2000 years ago. But we are striving in this church to be the best Christ we can be. And maybe we, go, we strive with a little baggage, but we're still striving and we're still trying to come up. So in that striving, I ask you to take a breath with me and just release and relax. The two first steps in any prayer is to release and relax. For as we release and we relax, we make room so that we may realize the truth of our being. I am the Christ. I am one with God. I am love. And I am filled with the peace of God. What a difference it makes in that simple breath when we relax and we release and we allow the presence and the power of God to reveal, to, re to realize within ourselves our wholeness and our oneness. And it is from this place that I ask that we all together recite from our hearts, not from our minds, but from our hearts, the prayer as taught by our way shower, Jesus Christ. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
hearts to Thee, our hearts to Thee. Yes, Lord, we come to thee this morning in silent prayer. In the prayers from our hearts. The prayer where we realize all that God is, I am. For God is my strength. I cannot fail. God is my wisdom. He guides me in all my ways. God is my joy. As I smile on my brothers and sisters. God is my peace, which provides me my calm assurance. And God is my love, which I share gladly with all. For I know in my heart, as I give, so shall I receive. And I joyfully, lovingly give all that I am. So we come to you in silent prayer so that we may realize fully all that our way shower Jesus came to show. He came to show us the light, the way, and the life. He came to show us that we are all brothers and sisters in Christ. He came to show us that we may have life and have it abundantly. He came to show us that in and through that one power, the one presence active in our lives, we can do all good things. All we need to do is to say yes. Yes to the God of our being. Yes to the presence and power within each other. For I see God in all things. Because I see God in myself. Yes, surely. The presence and the power of God is here this morning. And we feel that presence and power filling up, welling up in our hearts and minds to overflowing. For we can never outgive God. And the more we give, the more we receive. And we cannot help but give all that we are because he lives as thee. So this morning we come here with grateful hearts 
and we zoom together with grateful hearts, knowing all that we are has already been given to us. For it is our Father's great pleasure to give us all the gifts that he is. And we come to know our Father when we come together in silent prayer, in heartfelt prayer. For true prayer is a gift from God. And true prayer is when we commune with the God of our being. So let us realize in silent prayer that we are one with the one today, now, and always. And we simply say, for all that God is and will ever be, we are grateful. And we say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. And thank you, Jesus. Amen. It sounds like I didn't turn it off. Did you hear that? I heard it. Okay, well, it's going off. <laughs> it's off. Thank you. <laughs> it made a little noise. I have an email. Beep. <laughs> so great morning. Thank you for coming out this morning. Thank you for Zooming with us. It's always great when we come together. And we're always together. Right, No matter where we are, I, we always say church is wherever we are. Could be on a bus, could be at the beach. Or as Ian said when he was growing up, going to the soccer game, if God is everywhere, God is at the soccer game. And he, I think he scored some goals that day, but I can't recall. <laughs> it didn't matter. So, uh, you know... As you get up in years, uh, the doctors, they often suggest that you go out and get a colonoscopy, right? I'm due for one. I had one when I was 50. And I came out clean as a whistle, they say. <laughs> but this one man, married man, he went for a colonosco colonoscopy. And after it was through, the doctor said, everything's good. You are clean as a whistle. And the man said, oh, that's great, doc. Can you do me one favor, please? Can you write my note, write a note to my wife and tell her there's, you, found, you didn't find anything up there? Excuse me. Can you write a note to my wife and tell her you didn't find my mind up there? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to say it cleanly. <laughs> there was an express, expression my uncle used to like to say, is your up your butt. So <laughs> anyway, that didn't go too well. Well, well, we have another one. This past week, it's not a, a joke joke, but we were having Chinese this past week and I got a fortune cookie. And the fortune cookie said, to be more healthy, you must eat more Chinese food. <laughs> I thought that was funny. But thank you for coming out. Thank you for bearing with my joke. I should have written it down, but maybe would have punched it a little better. <laughs> but it's all good. So our lesson this morning is entitled, Who Am I? And it comes from Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 19. When G Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do the people say the son of man is? Well, they replied, some say John the Baptist. Some say Elijah. Others say Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. Then he asked them, but who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered, Simon Peter representing faith says, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus replied, you are blessed, Simon, son of John, 
because my Father in heaven has revealed this to you. You did not learn this from the human being. Now I say to you that you are Peter, and from this rock, upon this rock, I will build my church, and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven. And whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. You know, growing up, people would often ask, ask me at least, what do you see yourself becoming when you grow up? And growing up, we would often pretend to be firemen, policemen, garbage men, or even race car drivers when we played with our matchbox, matchbox cars, right? We often pretended to be cowboys or soldiers when playing army in the hayfields with our dirt bombs and our stick guns. Or we pretended to be great sports stars when we played baseball or tag football or basketball or even soccer with all the kids in the neighborhood. But I never recall anyone asking me, who am I? And I never recall myself asking myself, who am I? Do we even really have a, a sense of who I am? For many, it can, be very it can be a very challenging question. Who am I? This past week, I noticed I saw a polling question on Facebook. I belong to this Facebook group by um, Tony Robbins, about a half a million people. And the question was, who are you? And you had to reply in one word. And here are some of the words people replied. I am a warrior. I am me, the universe, retired, optimistic, unsettled, authentic, survivor, unique, tenacious, determined, sunshine, a badass, unconventional, charismatic, outdoorsy, magnetic, colorful, queen. We have a couple queens here. Adventurous, magnificent, powerful, enthusiastic, a giver, a fighter, strong, and one that I, I love, I am human. Do any of these words resonate with you? There are a lot of other words that I think resonate in truth. People said, I am co-creator, God, awareness, anointed, indefinable, illusion, light, perfect, blessed, limitless, peace, and my favorite of all, and it looked like the most popular, I am love. So in one word, who are you? Who am I? Simon Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. How about 10 positive words that describe who are you? Can you come up with a list of 10 words? One popular exercise in Sunday school is to name 10 people that we admire in life and why. People who are helpful, humble, confident, dependable, cheerful, optimistic, reliable, trusting, funny, fearless, and loving. Then we ask the fellow classmates in Sunday school to read the list back to each other. And it's a powerful exercise when the kids affirm to each other all these powerful attributes. And the lesson is what we see in others is a reflection of what we see in ourselves. 
Most likely we have heard this before and it's in alignment with our third principle. Thoughts held in mind create acts of like kind. And we can only see things within others, that which we believe and we think about within ourselves. And this is probably one of the most challenging lessons we all have to learn. Because for most of us, when we perceive something negative, our first response is, surely not me, surely you jest. I do not act like those people who annoy me or push my buttons. Have you heard that at work? Or have you heard that from yourself? It's the old expression, do what I say, not what I do. So self-awareness is key to our self-fulfillment because if we're not self-aware of our own attributes, how can we come into an awareness of our true self? Studies have shown that self-awareness is, is critical for your career success. People who are more self-aware tend to perform better at work, get more promotions, and lead more effectively. Companies with more self-aware professionals have shown stronger financial statements. Many companies that I know and that I have worked at have put in a practice called a 360 degree review process, especially for the middle and upper management teams. And they invite you to get feedback, not only from your superior, from your boss, but from those that you lead, that you encourage and that you lift up. A 360 review. And many surveys performed by a Dr. Yurik, she found that 95% of people think they are self-aware, 95%. But in truth, only 10 or 15% of people are really, truly self-aware. And she cites three reasons for the disconnection. And first we have our own blind spots. You see, we're on autopilot. And so we're just acting unconsciously and doing things without self-awareness. And then there's the feel good effect. We're happy to see ourselves in a positive light, a positive feeling about ourselves. We don't necessarily want to fully embrace those negative habits that we most definitely do. We want to see ourselves only in the light. And then the last factor is what she calls a cult of self. And the idea is we become more self-absorbed because of the explosion of social media. We always want to project that perfect image. I know when we put a post a picture on Facebook or Instagram, it's not the first picture we take. It's often the third or the fourth or the one where, oh, he's not smiling fake. He's, that's a real smile. Oh, you know, have you done, didn't, done that? So we want to put project out there, our best, our best self, but we're not really being true and self-aware of what we're feeling and expressing in the outer. So how do we become more self-aware? She suggests there's two ways. There's two things that we must address. We must address internal and external self-awareness. Internal self-awareness is that inward understanding of our values, our passions, our aspirations. And external self-aware is where we ask others to share with us what they see in us and surprisingly, people who are externally self-aware are not always internally self-aware. For research has shown there's no relationship between your external and your internal self-awareness. So to improve your external self-awareness, it's a good idea to find a loving critic 
either at work or at home, who will share with you the truth lovingly, who will be honest and candid with you. At work, I, I invite people to always have a buddy system. We have to write a lot of things. And I invite people to find a buddy so that they can share their writing with the buddy and can give them honest feedback before they share their writings with me. So at work, all too often, I know myself, I've waited to the last day of the year when I get my self-evaluation and my evaluation from my boss. And when my boss says surprising things, I should not be surprised because I didn't invite any external self-awareness throughout the year. Perhaps my boss was hard to get along with. It's no excuse. Perhaps my boss and I just don't see eye to eye. It's no excuse. Unless I invite the sharing, then we cannot heal that gap between his perspective and my perspective. But the other thing is to build internal self-awareness. And this may sound quite easy, but it, it's, it's not. Many people suggest journaling. And I've suggested it in the past. But what the psychologists say, don't start so gung-ho. Don't start by journaling all your faults because that will only be self-defeating. Start gradually, start slow. And at the end of each day, examine your day and, and ask yourself, how might I have done things better? How might I have been the best Christ in this situation? Where did I not express love in my words and my thoughts and my actions? But do it lovingly, do it gradual. For you are your own best friend. You are your own best cheerleader. And we, we will get a better perspective when we are not so hard on ourselves and when we're gentle and loving towards ourselves. So instead of trying to go deep, you should go wide. List the jobs that you have enjoyed the most. Look at the themes and the patterns that show up in your life. And as I said, end each day by asking, what went well today? What did I learn and I can do differently tomorrow? And what perspective can I get if I'm having a particular challenge? Some people fear that becoming more self-aware means seeing the ugly truth about yourself. And yes, the process can be difficult, but the process is definitely rewarding. And I've never seen anyone enjoy negative feedback, but it's something that we all must do. We must embrace the energy and allow that energy to show us what we need to learn. That's what our body is for. It's a teacher. When we have certain energy that fills us, we have to become self-aware as to why that energy is showing up in our lives. I know to become a minister, I had to take a self-awareness class. And I had to examine all those things that were showing up in my life from childhood to now and so forth. I had to journal and I had to understand that perhaps as a child, I didn't receive the love I expected. And then when I got into relationships, if I didn't receive that same love that I expected, maybe I had a, a reaction that wasn't based on truth. Maybe I reacted because I myself didn't feel lovable. And maybe I, that was that inner child, which we all have that we need to nurture and embrace. And we need to nurture that in our children to show them the love unconditional. And know that when they are reaching out or maybe getting out, all they're looking for is self-awareness. And we're not there to fix them 
We're only there to plant seeds and to allow those seeds to germinate so that they can become self-aware. I know when I had a question to my father, it always ended up in a lecture and nothing that he lectured really stuck because I didn't want to be lectured. All I wanted was love. So when certain characteristics in your personality, they trigger you, they trigger reactions, there is something that's coming up with you, within you that needs to be healed. It's something from your past that perhaps is unresolved. Let us remember that self-awareness -aware starts with yourself. Let's not start running out there saying, I know a bunch of people that need self-awareness. I know some family members, I know some friends, some coworkers, they need a whole lot of self-awareness. I remember one summer at Unity Village, I was out there for two weeks and we were talking about love, 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 and people were feeling it. And at the end of one of the weeks, this one lady shared a story about her father who was a, a pack, rat. pack rat. He liked to you know, collect everything. His house was filled with garbage. And I offered this woman some advice. More importantly, I offered her some unsolicited advice. And what came back was this, an ugly woman jumping down my throat. Don't tell me how to react to my father. Don't tell me what to do. You see, I didn't wait for an invite. I saw something that needed to be fixed when maybe that person just needed to go through that experience so that she could come to the same self-awareness that I had with my mother, who was a pack rat. You see, I never tried to take all the stuff away from my mother because she was so attached to it. She was not ready to release it. So sometimes you have to wait until the person is up ready and willing and able to have self-awareness. Just uh, a couple weeks ago, actually maybe three, Mond three Mondays ago, um, I had the pleasure to go to Velma Pruitt Hills, Dr. Velma Pruitt Hills life celebration service at one of the funeral homes in Queens. You know, I'm part-time, so I had some free time at work and I skipped over there to say a few words at, at the uh, life celebration service. And what came to my mind was, I, I knew Dr. Hill, and many of you know her, I knew her from in church. And what we know in church is usually the best that we see in everybody. But when you go through the double doors, sometimes we project something different. But I'm happy to say what Dr. Hill projected was something terrific because she inspired so many other women by her courage and her strength to become a doctor of mathematics. She inspired many by tutoring other women who thought less than of themselves being women of color and being conditioned to think I can't do this by all the things in the outer. She inspired these women to go on and get their own doctorates. But what I liked most about her was she didn't lecture anyone. She didn't tell them that they needed to be fixed. All she did was plant seeds in them and let those seeds come to fruition. And you could see that as woman after woman, man after man got up and spoke at the podium, how she planted seeds of love, and wisdom in each of them, and they grew and grew and grew. But what I liked most of all was one of the sayings that one of the ladies said. She said, Dr. Hill told me many times, sometimes you just have to kill them with your kindness. I thought that was a great one. Sometimes you just have to kill them with your love. Because we, as the Christ, can see past the outer conditions, see past their thoughts and misbeliefs 
And we are there to plant seeds and to call out the Christ in each other. But we can't do that until we become aware, self-aware of the Christ within us. Unity offers online self-awareness classes all the time. And as, as I mentioned, I've taken the class probably three times. And each time I had more and more realization of things that I, I was holding on to and I needed to let go. You see, much of the things that we hold on to is dependent on the relationships that surround us. And our relationships speak volume to our own self-awareness. If I look at my family cocoon that I grew up with, it speaks volumes to some of the things that I was holding on to. But Jesus had the greatest self-awareness because he knew with all his heart and soul who I am. Jesus knew who he was, for he was in not only relationship with his mother, his father, his brothers, and his disciples, but more importantly, he was in relationship with the God, God of our being, his father, our father. He had an intimate relationship with God. And it is only through that intimate relationship is where we can truly, truly come into a, a self-awareness of who I am. Jesus had this relationship and he's inviting each of us to come into that same relationship with the God of our being through prayer and meditation, prayer being communion with the God of our being. And meditation is that place where we come into realization that all that God is, I am. But 10 to 15% of us are truly self-aware. The rest of us are still becoming Christians. The rest of us really have to practice Perhaps sign up for a self-awareness class online so that we can realize all those things we're holding on to, we can let them go and celebrate our freedom and our oneness. For God is everything I see. For God is in everything I see because God is in my mind. I am not all the external things I think about my holiness is my salvation. I am a blessed son of God, and God goes wherever I go. God is my strength. Vision is his gift and my source. I cannot see apart from him. God is the light in which I see, and God is the mind in which I think. And God is the love in which I forgive. For God is the strength in which I stand firm. For I am self-aware that all that God is, I am. So this morning, I ask once more, I ask you to ask yourself, who am I? And how you respond is how we should live. Who am I? I am strength. I am wisdom. I am love. I am joy. And I am the peace of God. And so it is. Amen. So since David is not with us, I get to do double duty. <laughs> so I ask you to open your hymnals, and together, we're going to affirm who we are. And that is, we're going to sing hymn number 48, Always With Me.
always with me. I can never stray beyond his tender care. For our God is omnipresent here and there and everywhere. Yes, everywhere and everywhere. so tender, feel each trembling breath of prayer, for our God is ever listening, and His love is everywhere. but I was in the Suffolk County Choir, uh, County Choir as a middle school person. First tenor. <laughs> I think of Reverend Pat when I'm up here singing. He was always joyfully singing and on key. <laughs> so it's that time of our, less, our service where we share our love offerings. And I have in my hands, the love offerings that came in the mailbox. I have my checkbook because my pen stopped writing. <laughs> but I will sign my name soon after this. And I invite you to hold your love offerings on your heart. And together we can bless our love offerings. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. And so it is. And announcements. <laughs> Just a few. Good morning. It's a good feeling to be here, back in our church home. And it's all because of God's grace. And we just want to thank him. These are our announcements for today. Friday, August 20th at 11 a.m., the book discussion group will discuss two books, A Fine Balance to Rot by Rothenstein Mystery and The Things We Didn't Say by Amy Lynn Green, and this would be on Zoom. Sunday, August 22nd at 12.15, the Outreach and Membership Support Group will be meeting. Thursday, 
September 9th at 7.30, World Day of Press Service will be on Zoom. And the theme is All is Well with My Soul. Sunday, September 12th, the YEP will resume at 11 a.m. Saturday, September 18th at 10 a.m., the prayer chaplains will begin a new discussion of Lessons in Truth by Emily Cady, and that will be on Zoom. Saturday, September 25th at 10 a.m., retreat. We'll have a retreat. It's Finding the Secret Place, facilitated by Reverend Charles and a guest speaker to be announced later. Sunday, November 7th, at 1 to 5 p.m., mark your calendars for the family and friends of the, for the gala at the Carroll House, and that's in Baldwin. Outreach and membership, we are still collecting perishable items for the inn, and this is a time when they need it most. So whatever we have, we put it into the bin and um, it will be taken up. Um, and the support, you can support Unity Church of Christianity on Amazon when you shop at smileamazon.com. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye. Thank you, Joan. Thank you for those announcements. And as you all know, our meditation garden is complete. And this past week, we had another completion. Gutters were put on all the buildings. So we have brand new gutters and leaders all throughout the church and activity center. And it's beautiful. We even installed a rain collection barrel in the meditation garden so that we can collect some of the rain and then use a soaker hose to feed some of the plants. And uh, I love our meditation garden, but something else loves our meditation garden. And that's all the beautiful gray squirrels we have in the neighborhood. <laughs> They've been digging it up relentlessly. So I've, I have a new mission. And this past week, I caught four gray squirrels and relocated them. And there's more to come. I've taken them over to Lakeview, to the, the nature preserve there. And they have beautiful trees and they love it. And if I'm really feeling generous, I might drive an extra 10 minutes and drop them off in Garden City. <laughs> I want them to live large, you know? <laughs> oh. If you want one in your neighbor, just give me a call. I'll bring them. <laughs> and not to be, uh, I'll leave it at. So. <laughs> uh, but I'm catching them and it's fun. I do the same on my house because there's a tree in front of my house. They love to eat it every spring, a Dutch elm. And I catch them and relocate them to a house near you. Once we brought the squirrel all the way into, uh, what's that uh, park at the uh, north of uh, Manhattan? The Cloisters. And the joke is when we go to the dentist who lives in the Cloisters, when we see the squirrel, the squirrel now knows both English and Spanish. <laughs> uh, I guess now we can uh, bless our love offerings. So if you'll stand with us, we'll bless our love offerings. We say thank you, thank you from the bottom of our hearts for this ministry was built and is sustained by your love, by your generosity, and all that you give to this ministry. But most of all, we say thank you for, from the God of our being, knowing that all good gifts come from above. And for this awareness, for this realization, we simply say thank you, God, in Jesus' name, amen. And now we can virtually hold each other's hands and on Zoom, and we can close out the service, which is never closed out. We're always in service. 
through the peace song followed by the prayer of protection. Oh, it's a happy birthday. I'm deaf. <laughs> Anybody, it's the third Sunday already in July. Anybody born in the month of July? Okay. Raise your hand. Anybody? No one. Anybody online, Ian? No? Nobody. Well, we have one person. She was here last week, Sarah's mom. She'll be 98 on Wednesday. And, and the family will be there. So we celebrate mom. Thank you, mom. And Ian, Erin, and I, and Sarah will be down there on Wednesday to celebrate her birthday. And next Sunday, you will have a guest speaker, John Zank, Reverend John Sankowich. So come out and show the love, please. And now we can close out the service follow, with our peace song followed by the prayer of protection. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin. As you leave this place, you may find yourself asking, who am I? I am made up of all the people I've encountered and all the things I've experienced. Inside, I hold the laughter of my friends and the arguments of my parents and the chattering of young children and the warmth from kind strangers. Inside, there are stitches from the cracked hearts, bitter words from heated arguments, music that gets me through, and emotions I cannot convey. I am made up of all these people and moments in my life. That's who I am, or at least that's who I think I am. For in truth, who I am is I am the Christ, the loving expression of the God I know. So let us go out into this world realizing who I am so that we can be the best I am that we know how to be today, now, and always. And so it is. Amen. And let us affirm the light of God surrounds us. I am light. The love of God enfolds us. I am love. The power of God protects us. I am power. 
and the presence of God watches over us. For wherever I am, God is, and all is well. And so it is. Now you can get a virtual hug and give a virtual hug. Have a blessed day. Love you. You can unmute yourselves.